Okay, AP Calc is BC, 401, office hours. So hopefully you've tried these. And I know these are new, so you just try your best. It's kind of an opportunity for you to kind of think about it. Um, you could also check your answers on graphing calculator in polar mode. I'll show that on a couple of these. Now, this first one, this is usually, it's going to be R in terms of theta, kind of like these ones down here. That's usually going to be what, what's going to happen. <clears throat> but these, um, this is R equals three. And so this doesn't involve theta. So that means the radius is always three, no matter what the angle is. So when the angle is zero, the radius is three. When the angle is pi over two, the radius is three. When the angle is pi, the radius is three. Three, it's actually going to look like a perfect circle um, centered at zero, zero. So a little different than the circle we did in the notes. And this is on an x, y coordinate axis. It might be good to label your axis values since sometimes we're going to probably make them bigger or smaller. Now if you're to check this on your graphing calculator in polar mode instead of function mode, you go to y equals, and if you just put 3 in here, <clears throat> window we could do 0 to 2 pi, uh, we could say negative 4 to 4, negative 4 to 4, and if you graph it, it is a circle. Now you might be like, oh that's an ellipse. Well it's just because I the axes are stretched further in one direction than the other. It's not a square screen, but it's a circle. Um, so uh, next one is similar in the fact that it's a constant angle and there's no, there's no rule about the radius, which means the radius could be anything, but the angle always has to be pi over 4. Now, angle of pi over 4 is right here. So you'd be like, well, it's all the radii along that going out forever. And you might be like, it's just that, but it actually includes everything behind it also, because we can have negative radius, right? So the, the, the radius is from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? So give me any radius positive or negative along that angle. <clears throat> So it's a line, kind of interesting that this polar equation gives you a line. A constant angle in polar is a line. Okay, next one. Now, this has a couple different rules. I'd probably look at the angles first. So the angles are going from zero to pi over two. So it's just the first, this is quadrant one. That's the first quadrant, all the angles in the first quadrant. And the radius varies from one to two. So uh we could do that one to two so it's going to be it's going to be all it's a constant radius the like constant radius of one from zero to pi over two would be a quarter of a circle and the constant radius of two from zero to pi over two would be a quarter of a circle with the radius of two but then what we're saying is actually all the radius radii in between so it's going to be like shaded it's like a you know, and it's gonna, you know, so it's gonna look like this. That's what that graph looks like. It's a quarter, it's like a little quarter of like a donut. Okay, next one. Um, the angle is always pi over two, which is right here. And, but the radius only goes from negative two to positive two, the radius. Now from zero to positive two, that would be this line segment. But because we have negative radius, that means we get the angles behind the, the radius behind it. So it's a line segment. So it ends at those dots, right? And that's pi over two. So the two and the negative two don't have to do with y values. Those are radius. Those are values of radius. Okay, next one, um, pi over four to pi over three. Now pi over four is like this, right? And pi over three would be kind of like, like that and then the radius is says it's all positive radius so that means it's going to go it's going to be all and it's all the angles in between also so it's going to go outwards 
this way and it's going to be shaded and it's going to keep going forever. It's kind of this weird looking sort of triangular piece that goes out forever. It's not over here because it doesn't have negative radius. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that was pi over four. That was pi over three. And then it was all the possible infinite radii. Uh, positive. Okay. Now these ones, we we're doing some in class. Um, you're going to start to get good at recognizing these shapes. We're going to talk about them a little more today, but I would make a table. And we're going to talk about them a little more in the next uh, lesson. And, you know, just these have been given restrictions. Now, um, you can just plug some values in real quick. Cosine of 0 is 1, plus 1 is 2, cosine of pi of 2 is 0, plus 1 is 1, cosine of pi is negative 1, plus 1 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 2. So, um, I mean, you know, maybe to make this graph a little better, it looks like the radius is only maybe at most two away. Um, but at when the angle is zero, that means it's facing the right, the radius is two, and the angle is pi over two, which is straight up, the radius is one. The angle is pi facing the left as the radius is zero, so it's at the pole. Three pi over two is going to be down positive radius. So this is a cardioid. So we're going to be doing a lot of these. And this is the way I want you. This is sort of the shape. They're very rounded. Okay, they're not like a simple heart with a sharp point, And it should look like a very nice smooth. It's almost circular on the right side. And it should come outwards right here. Okay, if you graph it like this, I'm going to complain. Okay. It needs to be, you know, very round. <clears throat> and then it comes in at a cusp, at a sharp point right there. And I mentioned, I think, yesterday that if it has a cosine, then um, that's going to be sort of a horizontally oriented shape of all the different kinds of shapes that we're going to study. Um, and we could check that on your calculator. You could say... 1 plus cosine theta in polar mode window, 0 to 2 pi. I mean, from our sketch, I'm guessing negative 1 to 3, and maybe negative 2 to 2 would be a good window. And there you go. So you can see it's very rounded. It looks a little more stretched out this way. That's just because the window is not square. Even though the window I chose is technically square. Okay, so the next one. So this is a cardioid. And anytime we're going to talk about this today in the notes uh, or then in the next notes, um, you know, how you can kind of recognize it. But anytime you have uh, one plus or minus sine and the numbers in front of the sine or cosine are the same as the number right here, then you're going to get a cardioid. If this number is different than this value, if the coefficient of the sine or cosine is different than that, number being added, it's going to change the shape. We'll talk about that in the notes. Um, so, but, you know, my suggestion is just crank out a quick table. I mean, maybe after you do a lot of these, you get it, because there can be very subtle differences. If you get flipped backwards, it could, they could be kind of up and down instead of left and right. And the ones with sine are usually going to be vertical in orientation. So sine is 0, 0, plus one is 1, 2, <clears throat> 1, sine 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so it's going to be 0, and we're back to 1. So, um, try and use more of the graph if possible. And so, 0, 1 would be here, pi over 2, 2 would be up here, um, pi would be facing left with a positive radius of 1, 3 pi over 2 is facing down with the radius of 0, and then a 2 pi, we're back here at 1. Now, if you if you think, oh, this is a cardioid, then you're going to start to see, oh, okay, this is like an, like an upside down sort of looking cardioid. That cusp is always at the, is that always at the pole. So this would be kind of a decent graph. Okay. 
So, but if it involves sine, it's gonna be kind of up and down looking like this. Um, so got a few more in the back. Try those. And we're gonna save the last two for like the next homework assignment. So I'm, I'm gonna probably wait to go over until after we do the notes. The notes today are gonna to help you on those last two. Now this one's kind of interesting. It doesn't have a one there. The, the numbers aren't the same. So this is not technically a cardioid, but we can kind of try and it, it's gonna look, it's gonna look similar to it. Zero, pi, two pi, pi over two, three pi over two. So let's just crank out a table real quick. Uh, that's gonna be three, two, one, uh, two, three. So I'm doing some tr quick trig in my head, basic angle. So we're gonna go all the way to three. So I think we're gonna go and just leave each square equal to one unit. Um, so at zero, we're all the way over here at three. At pi over two, we're up, we're at two. At pi, we're facing left with a positive radius of one. That's usually where the cusp is on the cardioid. And then uh, three pi over two are facing down with the radius of two. So it, it kind of seems somewhere to the cardioid, except that usually this point would be right here. And, and that's really what happens here is that it, uh, instead of coming in at that cusp, it kind of looks like this. So it almost looks like a circle is kind of smashed in on one side. And we actually call that a convex limason. And a limason is sort of a name for pretty much kind of the whole group of shapes that uh, use this kind of method. So, I mean, we could try it real quick. Let's see, two plus cosine theta, probably go back to window real quick. Uh, X min, maybe negative two to four maybe negative three to three and there you go kind of, kind of looks like a circle is smashed i mean this should i think uh yeah so anyways <clears throat> convex lemus on next one you might guess might be similar to that but maybe the major difference between this one remember all the cosine ones are always like horizontal the sine ones you're going to be vertical. I bet it looks like this, but it's kind of up and down instead of left and right. Um, I'm not sure if it's down or up. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't challenge yourself to try and memorize every possible detail of these before you graph them. Uh, sine zero, zero. So two, three, two, one, two. So again, I'm just going to make each square worth one unit and so zero two is right here pi over two three is here pi two is here three pi over two one is down with a positive radius and we're back here so there you go convex lean this on okay all right uh next one now, next one, the numbers are the same. So maybe that's going to just be like a cardioid, you know? Uh, like uh, the ones on the front, but there's a negative, so that's different. I'm not sure, you know. But it, it has a cosine, so it should be kind of left to right, horizontal looking. Uh, cosine zero is one, so it's going to be zero, one, two, one, zero. So I'm gonna go with let's make each square uh, let's make two squares each equal uh, each uh, integer. So zero zero is here, so it starts there, and then pi over two one is here, and then pi is directly to the left with positive radius two, and you'll be oh that's a negative. No, nope, the radius goes in the direction that the angle facing three pi over two is down one, and we're back here. So this is. Now, you see, that's the major difference on these last ones is that point right there. That's where that cusp is. If it's at the origin, it's probably going to be kind of a cusp. And so, sure enough, it is a, uh, it is a cardioid. <clears throat> and it is left to right in nature. The, the major difference between it and the one with the plus on number six is it's kind of to the left instead of to the right. So 
if the coefficients in front of both of the in front of this match that number, it's gonna be a cardioid. And we'll kind of summarize that in those today in the next notes. So one zero one two one. And so zero one, pi over two zero, pi one, three pi over two two. So there's your cardioid. There you go. So like I said, we're gonna save the last two for the next assignment. So there you go. I hope you're kind of getting the hang of just kind of exploring these shapes and we'll talk about them a little more a little more specific in the next lesson.